Hey guys, Thunder E here, and yes, welcome to my 48 hour review of the iPhone 10, Apple's latest smartphone, which we've done an unboxing, this hands on video. But how is the day to day of the device? Like, what is, what's, what, what makes it tick? Why should I be excited? Why should I be disappointed? All that kind of stuff. So let's start off with a couple of things that the iPhone 10 really has. Now you look at the device, it is a gorgeous looking device. First thing I'll say is, I said it before, Apple has designed probably the best iPhone they've done. I like the design change over the last couple of devices. I also like the display, and I don't like the unibrow, AKA the notch. Yes, that's there, but it's something that you just have to kind of get used to. Uh, there are a lot of aspects of this device to like, and there's some things that I really don't like, and hopefully that can be fixed with some software updates. Let's start off with, of course, the most important thing, Face ID, right? Apple taking away the home button. Um, we now have to use our face to unlock the device. And it's something that is strange for a lot of people, but I will tell you this, it works very well. I've tried to fool it, and I've tried to you know, make it fail in some form or fashion, and I have not done that. You can check out our video where we try to do that specific feat. Face ID works about 99.9% .9 of the time. Uh, a few times where it's, it's not unlocked my device, but I like the fact that at least it just doesn't unlock my device for any random person or any random situation. I can use my pen. So I like that and it works very, very well, uh, which is good because it's got a true depth camera and that camera basically maps out your face and does a lot more with that. Now sticking with the true depth camera, uh, you also have of course the uh, front facing portrait selfies. That's a big thing. Everyone's doing it now. Apple's also doing it. Uh, and how does that actually work? How does it, how does it perform? I would say my experience has been mixed. It's been where I've received some portrait photos, been solid, looks really good, and I've gone like, well, oh, this is nice. And some that look like really washed out and very bright background and not blurred that you expect none of that bokeh effect. So I think that's a software issue. Again, it's beta as the Apple rightly says. So that I will put it there and hopefully that gets fixed and that works out eventually, but it has the capabilities to actually give you some really good photos um, in the long run. Now, uh, you also have an emojis, right? Again, sticking with the true, uh, true depth camera, an emojis is a gimmick. Let's call it what it is, it's a gimmick. It's a fun gimmick that works well, right? It maps out your face, at least some, like a 50 muscle recognitions. So you can record 10 second videos, send to friends. It's fun and I think a lot of people use it. So I gotta talk about it because I've used it. I found it interesting. It's a great tool to communicate with friends. Kind of just, you know, just goofing off and doing things. Um, fun and it works well, but it's a gimmick. And this is where we go. Thunder, thunder, thundercats. Oh! Now, let's talk about the display. We've got a five point, I think 5.8, I could be wrong. It'll be on the screen, so apologize. It's a QHD display, no it's not, because it's actually less than that in terms of dimensions, because Apple's numbers are slightly off. So let's call it Full HD Plus on the display. It's called Super Retina. It's a gorgeous looking display. It's really bright, it's vibrant, uh, it's, it's got HDR built in. It's also got the notch because of the design and because of the mapping of the true depth camera. Now what that gives you is a display that, look, if you're browsing uh, the web or if you're looking at say Twitter or Instagram, it looks really good, it, it maps out well. It doesn't necessarily use the whole display but it lights up like it does. Now when you're watching content, that's a different case entirely. Netflix on there basically forms a larger rectangular box that goes closer to the notch and closer to the bottom, but you can still see bars all around the device. And then um, YouTube and of course the uh, built-in player have bars on the side. So I, want, I would love to actually use the whole real estate to watch my content. You've got that 18 by nine aspect ratio, so I would like to see that there. But right now, that's not the case. Software can fix this, so we would like to see how that actually moves forward on this device. But the display itself looks pretty good. Now, because you've got a display like that and because Apple using Face ID, we, something's missing. The home button's gone, right? So we don't have a home button anymore, which means you can unlock your device. That's covered by Face ID now. Uh, but you don't have this home button gestures. You don't have the button to click to go home. You don't have the button to click to multitask and a few other things in there. Uh, but you've got gestures now. You can swipe from the bottom up. 
uh, that will take you home from any application. You can also swipe from the bottom up and stop in the center and that will give you a multitask menu. You can go to your applications or you've got quick multitask as, um, um, access by swiping uh, from left to right, right on the bottom of your display. And that's the gesture I like the most. That gesture works really well, and I think it's probably the best addition to multitasking we've seen in years. It's quick, it's fast, it's easy to go back to your last app. And I like it, and they've done well with that. The other gestures work well too, they are smooth, but also just, but I feel that it might take some people some time to get used to that because you're swiping from the bottom, it, you can accidentally hit some of your docked applications. So that might be an issue for some people. For me, not so much, but I can see it happening for some. But if you're gonna be using a case on this, and I've got some really nice cases to pick from, um, then you're gonna have issue. You wanna have a case, you wanna pick a case that doesn't have a, a bottom bumper, if you will, so that uh, you can easily swipe from the bottom. So that is something to take note with this device. Cases, you gotta pick and choose what kind of case you wanna get with this because you're going to be bumping to the case while swiping up from the one to go to your homepage. Granted, that being said, you can also put up a virtual um, home button and we have a video which you guys can check out. We have the cards linked there for you so you can see how to actually set that up on your iPhone 10. Now, moving to the rear camera. Uh, we've got dual 12 megapixel cameras on this device. Um, takes really nice photos in low light, in uh, in, in daytime conditions. Uh, the photos, the low light photos really turn out pretty well. Uh, they've done a good job. It's got dual OIS on the camera. Daytime photos, any smartphone now, they should nail that. So I think that's good. The video quality is also really good. The second um, OIS uh, stabilization really showcases here. So you can see how stable the video is as I move and I walk around, as I, you know, you can see how that actually works on this. So I think it's a solid, solid thing, which is good, uh, which is fine. Now, battery life, right? You use the phone, you want to see how battery life is, the performance, and I'll say my last two days have not been great. Um, they've not been good, <laughs> it's called what it is. Um, within five hours, I'm looking for uh, a charging port to charge my uh, iPhone 10. Uh, I wake up at around like nine, I turn on my device, I start using it by one. <laughs> I, uh, I'm down to about like my 20s in that, which is not cool. Like. The battery life on this thing is, for some reason, it's just not good. I'll put it that way. That's just my experience right now. Um, but in terms of the overall performance of the device, I like it. It's worked well. Games run really smooth on there. It's the same A11 processor, so you you get that. And you can you can check out our gaming video when we put that up, showcasing, of course, uh, games running on that display and also um, you know uh, the processor itself. But I, I will say that this though, I do like this iPhone. Um, there are some things I would like to change, but I do like what Apple has brought to the table with this device. I think a lot of Apple users will definitely like this. They will definitely like the approach that Apple is taking here. And I think Face ID works well. I can't ding it. And I'm glad it does. I'm glad that it covers all those bases for you. And the fact that you can just pick it up a little in daylight, it works also. So, um, you know, in, in complete sunlight in you know, uh, different conditions, this will work well. And that's a good thing. So if you guys have any questions or any comments, let me know. I'll try to answer them for you. Otherwise, guys, um, just stay tuned. In our video series, we're gonna do a 30-day review as well as a three months, six months. So we'll be covering this device in different stages for you. So you can see how it is if you're not buying it now or you're buying it later at some point. Uh, this is Thunder E saying thank you very much. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel. Hit the notification icon to get notified with our latest videos and always enjoy your entertainment. Thank you.